Hello lovely people, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and this is our lesson on the three friends from the Fiddle Time Joggers book. Now the three friends is a Finnish duet. You can see it's a duet because it uses two staves. The top one is always yours, you can see it's marked with a little star. And the bottom one is the duet part. Now in this case, this is the first time that a duet begins on the second part so you start with a bar rest now each bar in this piece is two beats long so you can see that from the time signature it says two four time and two four time really means there are two crutched beats in every bar i can tell you where the four comes from in america these crutched notes are called quarter notes uh, so there are two quarter notes in each bar. In England we say there are two crotchet beats in one bar. So if you have one bar rest at the start, you wait for two counts. So you start one, two, and then you play. So um, I'll count us in for those two counts and then we're going to start playing. So have your finger line, your thumb and your tennis ball ready. Check over your bow hold as well so that you've got an absolutely gorgeous bow hold today when you play this. We're getting more advanced by the day, so you want to make your bow hold in your left hand position absolutely perfect. I'll tell you uh, in advance that in this tune, we're going to leave our bow down in the rest. So we're not going to lift up the bow as we've done in City Lights, but this time in the rest of the end of line one, you leave the bow to lie down on the string. So try to remember not to pick it up. One, two. observant players amongst you will have noticed that here at the end you've got a first finger on the A string followed by a first finger on the D string so what we can do is place our finger in between the two strings can you play that with me listen very carefully to the tuning your finger if it doesn't quite work for you just try putting it at a slightly different angle and so what I'm trying to avoid here is to hop across see you hear a little gap between the two notes then which you don't have when you leave your finger on two strings one more time here from the end uh, the end on the B's and that's a good technique super let's go back to the beginning this time and i'll count us in for two again one two and softs written in. F stands for forte, you can see that underneath your first note. Forte means with fourth, so loud. Forte in Italian is loud. In line two you see a P and a P stands for piano and piano means soft. So we're going to go and play a lot softer on the first three bars of line two. 
but the fourth bar you can see the F again so we're playing loudly there and then if you look at line three you can see that you end piano again. Now these letters are valid until you see something else so uh, if you look at the end you see the piano at the beginning of the last four bars it means you stay piano all the time until your piece has finished so you stay at the same loudness. Now at the end, above the last three notes, you see Ritenuto. R-I-T stands for Ritenuto and it means hold back, slow it down a little bit. So at the end here you're playing softly and you're playing a little bit more slowly. Now how can we create a difference between louds and softs? There are three different ways really how violinists can make their playing louder or softer. Louder, as you can imagine, if you use more bow, your playing is going to be louder. So that is our method number one, is use more bow. So it's all very well if I've said to you use half bows for the, cr for the crotchets. You use very generous half bows for the crotchets, whereas, whereas if your crotchets are coming in a piano dynamic, a piano performance direction, you use slightly shorter than half bows. Now, the second method of playing loud and soft, apart from bowing with longer bows or shorter bows, is bringing the bow closer to the bridge to play louder and bring the bow away from the bridge, more towards the fingerboard, this black thing here, that makes your playing softer. I can show you this because I'm going to play on an open A string now and I would like you to listen. I'm going to start in the middle and then I'm going to drift my bow so see if you can hear and see a difference. Can you see and hear the difference? So as I came closer to the bridge my playing became louder. I wasn't pressing any harder or using longer bows at all. I was just coming closer to the bridge. And then later on, I moved my bow away from the bridge towards the fingerboard and my playing became a little bit quieter. Now, shall we do that together? So set your bow on the A string about in the middle and we're just going to play any old notes. And now, move your bow towards the bridge. So we have had two methods of playing louds and softs right now. First was use longer bows. Our second one was come closer to the bridge. This is all getting louder. Our third method is um, pressing a little bit harder. Now that is my third method because I automatically, when I use more bow, automatically tend to press a little bit harder. So you don't need to overdo it by adding too much extra pressure, but it is another way that you can make your music more expressive. So let's now go back and do the same exercise that we did a moment ago. We're starting in the middle of the bow and then we're going to, as we move the bow towards the bridge, use longer bows and increase the pressure slightly. And then after a while, when you're happy and you think now, now I'm playing super loud, then move your bow towards the fingerboard and start using less bow and pressing slightly less. So you should feel a real contrast between loud and soft playing. Now this time we're going to do this exercise on the D string. So let's get ready, about in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard and in the middle of the bow, so that you increase your bow speed. Off you go, just experiment with it. <laughs> to the bridge adding a bit more pressure we can use to make the beginning of the three friends a little bit louder then when we hit the second line where we see P for piano so quiet do completely the opposite make your bows a little bit shorter go a little bit away from the bridge and press a lot less hard and then have a contrasting section again at the end of line two where your forte starts again so we're going to just add 
are loud and soft now. So let's get ready, check out your finger line. After two, one, two. and soft and make them as clear as you possibly can. One, two. Awesome. What what good progress you've made today. Super. I very much look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, which is called Chinese Garden. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>